Hello everyone, welcome to What If Naruto Was Abandoned and Become a Chiha Dragon Emperor Part 1 Prologue Anahagakur no Sato, the village hidden in the leaves was founded by the two most powerful clans in the world, the Senju and Achiha clans. Their leaders, Hashirama Senju and Madara Achiha, were friends from childhood who saw the bloodshed of the Warring States period which lasted since the death of the last shogun in 254 BV before villages. After the father of Madara, Tajima Ichiha, died by the hands of his eldest, Madara had awoken the Manjikam Sharingan and Izuna, his younger brother had killed his best friend shortly after. The two with their new visual prowess had begun even more intense fighting against the Senju and their allies. Ultimately, Izuna was killed by the younger brother of Hashirama, Tabarama Senju, and Izuna entrusted his brother with his eyes. Madara, needing the light had taken Izuna's eyes for his own and obtained the eternal Manjikam Sharingan, the peak of the Ichiha's mighty Dejutsu. With his new eyes, Madara waged one last battle against the Senju, and in a battle that lasted an entire day, Madara's back touched the ground for the first time. He didn't want to admit surrender and told Hashirama to kill himself or his brother. Hashirama opted to kill himself and Madara, moved by his display, admitted defeat and joined the Senju to create a new organization, the village hidden in the leaves, and ended the Warring States period. But after some years, Madara thought that the Senju were too powerful and influential and tried to gain support from his clan to seize power, but they did not. Madara, now 32 years old, left the village. Nobody knew where he went, some say he went further north and snow country, some say he went south to the unexplored continent, and some say he went west, beyond the Sunset Sea. But wherever he went in his 16 years of travel, Madara came back with a woman he claimed as his wife named Visenya Achiha Blackfire and an army to wage battle against the Leaf. In his final battle with Hashirama, he brought the nine-tailed demon fox with him to battle. Their fighting was so earth-shattering, it left a scar on the very earth itself, creating the Valley of the End. And Madara, the most powerful Achiha, had died. His forces surrendered and the first great ninja war occurred. Hashirama, exhausted from the battle would die from mysterious circumstances and named his brother as Nidame Hokage Second Fire Shadow. Madara's wife was kept safe from harm by Tabarama, and Madara's son, Tajima Ichiha, named after his grandfather, would become a citizen of the Leaf. In the Second Great Ninja War, Tajima earned fame across the ninja world as the Crimson-Eyed Demon due to his mastery of the Sharingan. But despite all this, he never got the title of Ichiha clan head. During the war, he met Kaori Achiha, eldest child of Kagami Achiha's three kids, and had a daughter they named Kiyomi Achiha. Kiyomi Achiha, a natural prodigy and feared for her skills in Kinjutsu and Jinjutsu along with her fire release, earned her nicknames like Kanoha's fire goddess or Kiyomi the Nightmare Queen. After the war, on one drunk night, she hooked up with Minato Namikaze, the Yandame Hokage fourth Hokage, after he broke up with Kashina Uzumaki, her so-called rival from the Academy days. He got her pregnant and shortly after that, left her cause apparently Minato and Kashina were together again. After eight months, she would give birth to her son. But tragedy struck because the nine-tailed demon fox attacked two months after her son's birth and she would be among hundreds of dead in the aftermath of the event. The beginning, Minato Namikaze, the student of Jureya of the legendary Sanin, fourth Hokage of the Leaf and the fastest ninja alive, so fast that he was gone in an instant and all you could see was a flash of his blonde hair. The same Minato who single-handedly won the Third Great Ninja War was currently very, very and I mean very much depressed in his office, having to deal with the bane of all cage, paperwork. Why was he depressed you ask? It's simple really. Kishina Uzumaki left him just a few days ago and he feels like the world has ended. Knock knock, yes. Come and said Minato, still depressed. Maybe whoever this person is and whatever he or she is gonna do will rid him of paperwork. Hey kid. Said a voice he's all too familiar with. He looked up and saw his sensei, the Toad Sage, Jureya of the legendary Sanin. Minato's eyes widened. Sensei. What are you doing here? I thought you were running your spy network. Ah, the network can wait. Besides, I'm here for you. MMM me? Asked a very surprised and confused Minato. Yes. You. Look at you, looking all upset and miserable. Finish up and we'll go find ourselves a nice new girl for you. I don't know sensei. It's a little too early for me. Kishina and I just broke up. Oh please. You didn't break up. She left you. Come on let's go. And with that, Jureya grabbed Minato and they took to the streets. Searching, eating, getting drunk and being chased by hordes of angry women who were peeped on by Jureya. Two months later, Minato was waking up. Besides him was Kiyomi Achiha, the granddaughter of Madara Achiha, and the strongest Kanoichi in the world. On one of their nights, Minato and Kiyomi met and they started dating after Minato saved Kiyomi from being raped by some Madara haters. Maybe leaving Kashina was for the better he thought. He looked at the clock and saw it was already 8.37 am. By the sage of six paths beard. It's already past 8.30. I'm late for work. Um, Kiyomi-chan, it's time to wake up now he said with a bit of desperation in his voice. 
Five more minutes she said. But Kiyomi chan I'm gonna be late for work, you're the hokage. Besides, you can be late and get away with it, maybe five more minutes ain't so bad he thought and went back to sleep. And he didn't wake up until another 30 minutes passed. 5.45 pm, Leonardo finally finished his duty for the day and walked home. But he felt a presence nearby. Hello? Who's there? Noisy noises. I'll ask again, who's there? He said as he took out a kunai. But before he could do anything, he felt a chop to his neck and he was losing consciousness. The last thing he saw was a person, no, not just a person, but Kishina Yuzumaki of all people who knocked him out and was making hand signs. Kiyomi got home after some time. She was excited to tell Minato the news. She was pregnant. After their dates, they became a couple and wanted a family. Minato wanted to name the baby Naruto, after the main character of Jurei as the tale of the utterly gutsy ninja whereas Kiyomi wanted to name him Izuna, after her great-granduncle. After some arguments, they finally decided that he'll be called Naruto Izuna Chihanamakas. She finally got home, but Minato wasn't there. Strange. He was usually home by now. She saw a note on the table and grabbed it. Her jaw dropped as the content on the note broke her heart. Minato and Kishina were in a relationship again, and Minato didn't want anything to do with her anymore. She was angry. She went to the training ground and vented out her frustrations. But in the end, nothing could repair her broken heart. She fell into the Ichiha's curse of hatred. Seven months later, during the last seven months, Minato announced Kishina as his wife and founding a new clan, the Yuzakas Yuzumaki Namikas. Kiyomi was outraged, and so was the Ichiha clan. They felt betrayed for this. Kishina was the one who left him and for Minato to simp for her was an insult since Kiyomi was pregnant. But they kept it hidden. For now. In the end, Ichiha would get their payback for this insult. Kiyomi would get her revenge soon. Hanoha Hospital. Kiyomi was a veteran of the third great ninja war. She spent nights starving with tasteless bars for food and sleeping in trenches for weeks on end. She was trained to be a killer, but she wasn't prepared for childbirth. God damn it. When I get my hands on that bastard, I'm gonna torture him to death along with his red-headed slut. Aya. The midwives were wondering if she lost her brains, but it doesn't matter. Just one more push Kiyomi-sama. We can see the head. Get it out of me. Using all of her strength left, she put one more push and out came the baby. Congratulations, Kiyomi-sama. It's a boy. The baby cried loudly as the nurse wrapped him in white cloth and gave it to his mother. The baby's tiny hands clung on to its mother as she, using her remaining strength, gave him all the love she could. Kiyomi-sama Kiyomi looked up and saw the nurse with a smile on her face. Would you like to fill out these papers? She replied of course. What's the child's name? Asked the nurse. Kiyomi thought hard but came to a decision. Naruto Naruto Izuna Che. She said with a smile. Who's the father? Asked the nurse to which she replied, I don't remember. She didn't want her son associated with Minato after the stunt he pulled, and the nurse didn't push on, just putting a blank. Sharingan, seven years later, two months after Naruto's birth, the nine-tailed fox attacked the leaf on October 10th. Naruto, who was being guarded by Shisui Ichiha, his cousin, was saved, but the same could not said about Kiyomi. She was among the many casualties of the Nine Tails attack. During the chaos, Minato, along with help from the third and his students, the Sanin, managed to seal the Nine Tails into the four THS newborn twins, and unknown to all except Minato, Naruto's half-siblings. The Yin half went to the older, Menma, while the Yang half went to Mido. The fourth revealed their Jinchuriki status to the leaf. At first, many thought they were the Nine Tails reborn, but after some convincing, the villagers looked at them as heroes. But the leaf wasn't without some conflict in the last seven years. The Hyuga affair as it would be labeled, saw the leaf in the hidden cloud, and with stone cause they hate the leaf, nearly go to war over the cloud ambassador trying to steal Hinata Hyuga, the heir to the clan and Hiashi killing the man in the process. The leaf, which was still recovering from the attack four and a half years ago, could not deal with the bigger army of cloud and stone, combined with their four Jinchuriki and cloud's mega chakra cannon. In the end, the leaf was forced to give into terms and surrendered his Ashi Hyuga, the head of the cadet branch and Hiashi's twin brother. There was also growing mistrust between the leaf and the Ichiha clan, and word reached the higher-ups of a planned coup deaded. Shurikens and kunai were thrown in the training ground by a boy of seven years of age. He gained a reputation as a prodigy among prodigies in the academy, as he displayed talent and skills not seen, if not surpassed the fourth hokages. Many looked at him with awe as a sign that the leaf will continue to be the strongest, but many were concerned that he will be a power-hungry maniac like his great-grandfather. He looks like this with a bit of dark blue in the hair. He heard some noises and grabbed a few shurikens. About time he thought as he threw them and the individual came out. Taking his mother's katana, he channeled chakra through his feet and jumped high. He struck the opponent who blocked with his own tanto. Gotta do better than that. The person said with a grin. Naruto in turn grinned as well, much to the person's confusion. But he got his answer as Naruto went poof. The clone. 
he thought as he turned around to deflect three shurikens thrown. Naruto weaved through hand seals fast as he shouted fire style. Great fireball jutsu. At the person who vanished. Damn him and his body flicker technique though Naruto as he too performed the technique as the two were fighting atop a tree branch. Oh why, oh why did I taught you the body flicker? Because you wanted people to think there was someone who was your protege who can learn your techniques, Shisui. Oh right thought the now identified Shisui. I may have taught you my signature technique, but I haven't taught you everything. Said Shisui as he kicked Naruto in the chest as he body flickered away and channeled fire chakra through his tanto. Shit though Naruto as he too channeled chakra, but unlike Shisui's was lightning, through his okatana, and they dueled for some time. Seven years old and already capable of jonin level chakra control. My little brother really is a prodigy thought Shisui. You may wonder why Naruto knew chakra control practices normally done for people at least twice his age. The answer is simple. Fugaku Uchiha, the clan head, wanted Naruto to learn fast, so that as he quoted Madara's power now shall be for the benefit of the clan. And thus instructed Shisui to teach Naruto things Genin, even Chunin were to learn as they grow older. Higher style. Fire Dragon Flame Bullet. Shisui was broken out of his thoughts as Naruto launched a few fire dragons at him, and he body flickered away. Where is he? Where? 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 Screamed Naruto in his mind only to realize that Shisui had a kunai near his throat. Sorry Naru, but it seems like I win. Yeah yeah you win said a frustrated Naruto. Oh come on. Cheer up. You did far better than Genin could do. Thanks Nai san Just as they were going to continue, an Anbu with a weasel mask appeared. Itachi Itachi Nai. Hello Shisui. How are you Naruto? Practicing your jutsu. Itachi Nai, I told you before, it's Izuna. Itachi didn't say anything rather, he poked Naruto in the forehead. Ah. That hurts Itachi Nai he said with a pout. Shouldn't you be on a mission? Oh I finished early. He looked at Shisui as his face turned serious. We need to talk Shisui. Shisui nodded his head. Naruto, how about you head home? We're finished for the day. But Nai-san, we just began half an hour ago. I know what Itachi and I need to discuss this. It's very important. Okay Nai-san, but you owe me a new jutsu after this. Shisui just grinned as he ruffled Naruto's hair and he walked away. The body flickered away as Shisui's grin face turned into a serious one. What is the clan planning next? He said to Itachi. Naruto walked down the streets of the village with a few ryo in his pockets. He entered one of his and Shisui's favorite shops, the Dango store. He entered the store and ordered six Dango. Six for him and none for Shisui. He was laughing like crazy in his mind, picturing Shisui's pleading face. He walked out the store, but he didn't look at where he was going, and bumped into a silver-haired Anbu with a dog mask, with an orange book he saw the adults enjoyed reading, giggling weirdly and making women mad. Oh I'm sorry, I didn't see where I was going. Nah, it's fine. I wasn't looking either. Said the Anbu as he saw an Ichiha version of his sensei. Strange. He looks like sensei. Hello Kakashi. My youthful rival. How are you this fine evening? Said a loud man wearing a green tight spandex with orange leg warmers, a jonin flak jacket opened, a bowl style haircut, and the thickest eyebrows Naruto has ever seen. I. I thought you were on a mission. What are you doing this late afternoon? Said the now identified Kakshi to Guy to which he replied, oh I'm tutoring a young lad at the academy. Guy then noticed the kid next to Kakashi and asked oh who is this youthful young lad here. I'm Azuna Cheha, sir. Wait, I heard of you from the academy. They say you are a very talented young man with potential not seen since the fourth. Thank you for the praises though it's just hard work. Anyways I have to get going. Such a nice young lad don't you say Kakashi, who looks an awfully lot like sensei. A week later, Naruto was concerned. Shisui wasn't home for a week. If he was out on a mission, he would leave a note for Naruto to know but he didn't. And the clan was acting strange lately, and Naruto had a sense of dread in his spine. Knock knock. He walked to the door and opened it and saw three members of the Ichiha police force. Izuna Ichiha. Asked the man in front who appeared to be the leader. Yes, we need to ask you some questions. First off, when was the last time you saw Shisui? About a week ago. Where exactly? On Ichiha training ground 7. Tell us what happened there. Well we finished earlier than most days because some Anbu guys came and said the elders and Hokage wanted to see him. As Naruto said this, their eyes widened. Naruto didn't like this and asked, why? Did did something happen to Shisui? We found a body on the Naka River and confirmed it to be Shisui Ichiha with his eyes missing. This statement broke Naruto. Shisui was dead. It can't be Shisui. How? Why? We're sorry, but we promise we'll find out who did this. Naruto stood before Shisui's grave as he put the flowers atop a tombstone. I promise I will avenge who did this to you, Nai-san. I promise that whoever did this will die. He declared as his eyes showed his newly awakened Tutamo Sharingan. Downfall, unknown location outside Kanoha. Itachi waited at the entrance of the cave for someone with an orange mask that had black flame-like markings. He met this person before on a mission to escort the fire daimyo before at age 8. 
the mission saw his teammate Tenma Izumo die and the event awakened Itachi Sharingan. But now, past grudges were useless as he needed this man's help. The man who claimed to be Naruto's great-grandfather, Madara Chen. The orange masked man was walking into the cave as he heard someone calling him. He first assumed it to be a Zetsu clone, but the voice was different. The person jumped down and he saw Itachi Uchiha. How unusual. He thought as he readied his Kamui and Sword Incas of an attack. There's something I need you to help me with, linking in surprise at the statement though his mask didn't show it, he thought of the clan's recent idea for a coup and wondered if it was because of it. Council room, we cannot allow the Uchiha clan to proceed with their coup deaded. Came from the voice of the retired third Hokage, here is in Siratobi. I agree. If the clan is going to revolt, then we must be prepared for it came from the voice of the old Warhick Danzo Shimura, known to many as the Darkness of Shinobi. I will not allow the village to become weak because of the Uchihas. Minato felt a shiver come up his spine, as though their plan would eventually come to bite them in their butts later on. Fine. Assemble all Jonin and Anbu level Shinobi to prepare for battle. Let the Uchiha make the first move. You hear me Danzo? Let the Uchiha make the first move. Of course Lord Hokage said Danzo with sarcasm on the Hokage part. Academy, Naruto was bored. He looked out the window, remembering the times he and Shisui used to go out together. The lessons, as always, were boring. The Academy constantly talked about its founding, its rich history, portraying Stone and Cloud as evil, the so-called heroic last stand of the Uzumaki clan, before they were all wiped out, propaganda propaganda. Izuna Chia, Naruto saw the teacher, who was obviously angry at his lack of attention on the subject. What? He asked in a bored tone. Pay attention, why? He asked again. Because what I'm teaching is important for your future career as a shinobi. What part of learning about the daimyos of different lands or their branch families is important for a shinobi? Or chakra control when we can't even practice it. Yes it is necessary for a shinobi to learn all these. No it isn't. It's a waste of time to learn about weaklings who think they're strong. Power is the only true necessity in the shinobi world. The teacher didn't know how to respond to that. No student ever responded like that. Only veteran shinobi who saw firsthand the horrors of the world thought like that. Before any more was said, the bell rang and students went outside for daily tojutsu spars. Academy playground, so far, the matches were simple and had a pattern that occurred almost every time. The pattern being a child of a clan usually winning against civilians due to them receiving training at an early age. Anada Hayuga defeated Sakura Hiruno within a minute as Sakura, who was a total fangirl to Sasuke, only cared about her looks to impress Sasuke and didn't care about training. Nido defeated Ino Yamanaka, and Menma 2 won a one-sided fight against a civilian kid. Shikamaru and Choji were next. Choji, due to his kind nature didn't want to fight and Shika, being a Nara, forfeited. Shino and Sasuke were next, and Naruto had to cover his ears cause of the fangirls, particularly Sakura's banshee-like voice. Sasuke won although Shino proved to be a tough opponent. A few civilians here and there until the final match, Izuna Chiha vs Kiba in Yuzuka. Alright. Come on, Izubaka. It's time I whooped your ass and show everyone who the real alpha dog is. Declared Kiba. He always was jealous of Naruto as he was dead last, whereas Naruto was the top of the class, praised by teachers and experienced shinobi as a prodigy among prodigies. We're not dogs, Kiba, shut up. You think you're so better than everyone else don't you, at least I'm not the dead last. Replied Naruto in a bored tone. Kiba was angry at being called dead last and he wanted to insult Naruto for it. He would regret the next words that came out of his mouth. Oh yeah, you're only number one because Shisui taught you. If not for him, you would be lower than me. Heck, you wouldn't be half as good as you are right now. You think he's so great of a shinobi, huh? Guess what? He isn't. If he was, he wouldn't be dead. The other students and teachers dropped their jaws at what Kiba said. He went too far. Kiba calmed down and thought he went too far and wanted to apologize, but before he did, Naruto appeared right in front of him with his two Tomo Sharingan spinning in anger. Kiba gulped at the sight. Hunch punch, don't, hunch punch, insult, hunch punch, shisui, hunch punch, ever, hunch punch, again, uppercut, you mutt. He roared as he jumped and kicked Kiba to the tree with enough force to break his arms. Kiba screamed out in pain as the teachers went to check on him. Kiba's unconscious, medics. He has a broken arm. Naruto walked away, his scowl never leaving his face as his Sharingan was still blazing. Students, even the teacher backed away in fear. One thought came to everyone's mind, never make Izuna angry. Unknown location. Toby chuckled, then it became a full-blown laughter. I warned my clan ages ago that this would happen, and it finally did. First the Senju, then the Uzumaki and now the Achiha, haha. <laughs> Itachi caught on the words that escaped Toby's mouth. This happened before. What do you mean first the Senju, then the Uzumaki? Toby looked at Itachi and wondered if he should tell him. Telling him of the village's dirtiest secrets would only make Itachi more loyal and mistrustful of the leaf. Alright fine. 
You see, back in the first war, many members of the Senju clan under Danzo's orders were sent on multiple suicide and high-risk missions because he felt the Senju's power and influence on the village was a threat to his visions for the village. Until eventually, they all died out, except for the first Hokage's granddaughter, Tsunade Senju. In the second war, he leaked out information of Nawaki Senju, grandson to the first Hokage, and his Dna was later salvaged by Orochimaru. And Kato, the lover of Tsunade Senju, was sold out by Jiraiya of the Sanin spy network, and the enemy set up traps that led to his death. He was always jealous of Dan who managed to win Tsunade's love unlike him. In the history books, Yuzashio is portrayed as a clan of innocent seal masters, but it is also a lie. Their use of the slave seals, mind-altering seals and many more was seen as an evil even by shinobi standards. But their downfall would come from one of their own. Kishina Yuzumaki. Her title as heir was given to her younger sister, and she, allying with Danzo, were sent to Yuzu along with Yureya to break the seals that led to the near extinction of the clan by the foundation and the leaf. Itachi gulped. The leaf did all this. Killing out the Senju, selling out Nawaki and Dan, betraying the Yuzumaki. Was his loyalty to the village even worth it? So, what would you do, now that you know all this? The question broke Itachi's thought and he was thinking fast. The plan will still go as according to the original. Tonight, we kill the clan and I join your organization. But on one condition. Tobi was surprised. A condition. What is it? You spare my younger brother, Sasu Naruto Izuna. Of course. After tonight, only four Ichiha shall remain on the world. And with that he walked away. Condition or not, I would have taken Naruto away. He will be a useful ally in the future. After all, the prophesized Ichiha prince will surpass his great-grandfather. Fire Dragon Flame Bullet. Five fire dragons came out and attacked the dummies, destroying them. Naruto was panting heavily. Ever since Shisui's death, he trained and trained to get stronger to avenge his older brother. He wiped away the sweat on his face as he jumped up and face downwards, throwing fire chakra-laced shuriken at the targets before doing hand signs and shouted fire style. Great Fireball Jutsu. At the last dummy, turning it to ashes. Must must get stronger to avenge Shisui Nai were his last thoughts before he collapsed from exhaustion. Night time, Naruto woke up and saw it was already night. He must have slept for three to four hours as he looked at the time and saw it was already past eight. He got up, took his mother's katana and left for the compound. Secret location. The Ichiha clan is growing restless. You have two choices. You either kill them and spare both Sasuke and Naruto or you join your clan in the coup and allow all of them to die. You choose. Came from Dan Zoshimura, one of the Lee's elders and an advisor to the Hokage. The sole leader of the Foundation, a division of the Anbu Covert Black Ops that do missions even regular Anbu didn't do. He was hailed as the darkness of the Shinobi for his unorthodox methods and being the prime suspect of many killings, massacres and genocides, though never was proven. Yes, I understand. Came an emotionless response from Itachi Ichiha. His eyes were dark, his soul heavy, filled with pain and regret for the next mission he was going to do. His mission. Massacre the Ichiha clan. Ichiha clan district. Naruto remembered all the times he and Shisui spent together. On the Dango shop, the Ichiraku Raymon stand, the forest of death, etc. As he reached the district, he saw that the guards weren't there. Strange. The guards were usually up and patrolling the district in this time. But when he entered the gate, he saw something that terrified him to the core. The Ichiha clan was slaughtered. Naruto went to one man and started shaking him, pleading for him to wake up, but he didn't. He asked for help and to see if anyone was still alive, but none answered. He then heard a familiar voice calling him. Hello Naruto. Naruto turned around and saw Itachi. Itachi Nai. What's happening? Why is the clan slaughtered? He looked at Itachi's sword which still had blood and realization crept into Naruto's mind. You you didn't you couldn't. Why? Why? It's simple. To test my strength. Wh dot dot what? You heard me. To remove the weak Ichiha. I killed my clan, just like I did Shisui. Naruto took a step back. Itachi killed Shisui. But why? He screamed as tears rolled down his cheeks. He was your best friend. To obtain the next level. The dot dot next LL level. Yes. He showed a Sharingan, but then, the three Tomo started to intertwine and combine, creating a three Shuriken shape. This is called the Magicum Sharingan. Let me show you how I did it by using one of my newfound powers, Tsukiyomi. Tsukiyomi world. Naruto's world turned into black and white with a blood-red sky as he was chained on a cross. Itachi forced him to see everything his massacre of the Ichiha clan. The cries of men, mothers pleading for their children's life, innocent children who saw their parents die in front of them, and Itachi killing them next. If Kunai and Shuriken didn't kill them, he killed them with his sword. He went into their homes as fathers were useless to stop the bloodshed, mothers hiding children, trying to plead with Itachi to show mercy to their children and children, even babies pulled out of their hiding spaces before the cold steel of Itachi's blade ended their lives. 
Naruto saw Itachi drove his blade through Fugaku and into Mikoto, his godmother who took care of him since day one. No Nuo and Naruto, the voice was all too recognizable to Naruto. It was Shisui. He looked and saw Shisui was bleeding, with various kunai and shuriken embedded on his body. Nai-san. Help me. Please. I'm afraid he can't do anything to help you and you to him. Came Itachi's voice from behind. Itachi. Please, stop this. Watch, as I kill Shisui. Itachi took out Shisui's eyes, ignoring his screams of pain. After that he lifted his sword, ready to take his head. Why didn't you help me, Naruto? Were Shisui's last words as the sword took off Shisui's head. Naruto released a large burst of chakra as he screamed in anger and pain. His eyes began to morph and he broke the Tsukiyomi. Back to reality, Itachi saw Naruto fell to his knees. He looked at Naruto's seemingly unconscious body and muttered I'm sorry before turning around and leaving. Yu Yu. He looked back and saw Naruto getting up with a dark blue chakra surrounding him. He looked at Naruto's eyes and gasped. Manjikam. Naruto's right eye was glowing as it was spinning. Crimson and purple lightning started to form on his hands until it formed a sword. Then, he charged at Itachi with the intent to kill, but Itachi blocked and jumped on the roof. Naruto's right eye glowed again as black wind started to chase Itachi until the wind struck and he jumped down. Lightning and wind manipulation. Not even Kakashi Senpai or San Village's wind users showed a quarter of this strength. Is this his Manjikam ability? But, why is his right eye only glowing? Itachi was broken out of his thoughts as Naruto screamed, fire style. Fire dragon flame bullet. And Itachi had to dodge five fire dragons. His previous question was answered when Naruto's left eye glowed and the fire dragons came back. His left eye's ability is to control fire. Itachi used a water jutsu he copied to dispel the fire dragons, but he saw Naruto's left eye glowing again, and the water turned on him instead. Right eye gives him unrivaled mastery of lightning and wind, while his left eye controls fire and water. So the old tales were true. Naruto is the Ichiha prince. Itachi dodged the attacks coming at him until they suddenly stopped and saw Naruto clutch at his eyes and blood came pouring out. You impress me Naruto. You really are Shisui's brother alright. At the mention of Shisui, Naruto's eyes widened in rage. You have no right to speak his name like that you bastard. His manjikam spinning furiously, dark blue chakra began to surround Naruto until a spine, then ribsage, arms, a skull with seven demonic horns and flesh started manifesting. The Susanoo? Thought Itachi in shock, awe and panic all at the same time as the same lightning danced on the Susanoo's hands as it slammed down on Itachi's position, but Itachi flickered away. Water dragons from the pipes of the deceased's homes started to attack Itachi, but he quickly finished them with Phoenix Flower Jutsu. The Susanoo opened its mouth and let out a loud demonic roar that echoed throughout all of the village. Itachi covered his ears, but had to avoid a fire-lightning combo attack coming out of the Susanoo's mouth. The Susanoo disappeared as Naruto was exhausted. He was half-blind from using his Manjikam powers and Susanoo at the same time he acquired them. He fell down, his sight blurry and blood coming out his eyes, nose, ears and coughing out blood. But your Manjikam, you are among the few who in the clan who awakened it. If you want to avenge Shisui and the clan, then hate me, detest me, despise me. Grow stronger and when you can use your eyes properly, come find me, I'll kill you. He declared before he succumbed to unconsciousness. One day, you and Sasuke will redeem me and the clan. And Itachi left just as Anbu and every available ninja, including the two Hokages came to the district. That was certainly an interesting turn of events thought Toby before he disappeared in a swirl. Summons, Ichiha clan district, the Anbu and Jonin of the Leaf were in the Ichiha clan's district. Many were shocked to see the dead bodies of the Ichiha, men, women and children. More shocking however were signs of a battle that included high-level jutsu in the district. Who could have done this? Incredible. Must have been powerful to do this much damage. All the while Minato was worried for his secret son, Naruto. After the Nine Tails attack, due to Kashina's insistence, he neglected Naruto, no, he abandoned him in favor of Menma and Mito who possessed the yin and yang half of the Nine Tails. His fear of Kashina made him unable to take care of Naruto. After Kiyomi's death, he tried taking Naruto, but Kishina, who always hated and was jealous of Kiyomi, would not allow him, and so did the Ichiha clan, because they didn't want the only remaining descendant of Madara to be near a well-known anti-Ichiha Kishina. Naruto inherited his talent whilst M and M inherited their mother's loud, brash attitude and hunger for power. If Naruto died, he would never forgive himself, and Kiyomi would show no mercy in the afterlife. He was broken out of his thoughts when suddenly, an Anbu spoke. Lord Forth, we found two survivors. Who are they? Asked Minato with hope in his voice, hope that Naruto would be alive to be able to redeem himself. Sasuke Chiha, second born of Yugaku Chiha and Naruto Izuna Chiha, replied the Anbu. Oh, thank the sage. He thought in relief. But his condition is bad, Lord Forth. He is currently experiencing severe chakra exhaustion and is in a coma. Both of them. Then why are you still standing here for? Take them to the hospital. 
Now, the Anbu quickly left to put both Sasuke and Naruto in the hospital. Who would have wanted to kill the Uchiha clan like this but was Itachi? The Anbu and Jonin, along with Hiruzen and Minato, turned around to see Danzo walking in. Itachi greeted despise his clan under the pressure of being a shinobi too early. He vetted out his anger by killing his clan. Minato went to speak with Danzo. It's you. You ordered Itachi to kill his clan, didn't you, Danzo? Said Minato with a fury not seen since the third war. I did what I did in order to protect the village. Do you realize the problem we're currently facing, Danzo? I cannot allow you to continue working on your own authority anymore. The foundation is hereby disbanded. And with that Minato flashed away to the hospital to check on his secret son. Lord Danzo, the body count doesn't match up. What? I witnessed everything. Danzo turned around and saw his other foundation guard was actually Itachi in disguise. If you harm Naruto or Sasuke even in the slightest, I will leak vital information of the village's secrets like the Senju and Yuzumaki. Hearing this, Danzo's eye widened in shock just as Itachi disappeared in a murder of crows. Damn him. Morning. Itachi knelt down in front of the third and fourth Hokages. The mission was successful. The coup d'etat was prevented, but at a cost of every Ichiha except Sasuke and Naruto. As an added bonus, Naruto managed to awaken his Manjikam, and Itachi intended to give him Shisui's eyes to allow Naruto to gain the eternal Manjikam Sharingan. Flashback. Itachi I don't have much time I probably won't make it, the poison's infected too much. Do me huff huff a last favor, will ya? Of course Shisui. Take my eyes. Its power the Kodamatsukami is too dangerous in the hands of a wrong person. If Naruto awakens the Manjikam and his eyes give him mine. He will need it. Present. First, I must thank you Itachi. The village avoided a civil war thanks to you. Peace has been maintained. Though I must apologize, Itachi. I wish there was another way to resolve this issue without resulting in this. Said Minato with guilt in his voice. Lord Fourth, will you swear to me that you will take care of Naruto and Sasuke for me? Yes. Though I may not be able to wash away their hatred for you, I am willing to bear their hate. I wish the others had your kind heart Itachi. But in the end, I was weak. Feel free to sneak into the village whenever you want to check in on them. Lord Fourth, I have one final request. This caught Minato's interest. What is it? Itachi didn't reply instead went to give Minato a scroll. After viewing its content, Minato gasped. This is, yes. Shisui Ichiha's eyes. He entrusted them to me. Last night, Naruto awoke in his Manjikam Sharingan Minato's eyes widened in shock. In order for an Ichiha to gain eternal light, they must put the eyes of a sibling or someone close. Naruto overused his Manjikam last night, and I'm certain he's at least half blind. You got it Itachi. Lord Fourth, before I go, I must warn you, beware of Danzo and Kishina. Their hands are dirty with the blood of innocence, and I believe, no, I know that they will try to get Shisui's or Naruto's eyes for their twisted ambitions. And with that, Itachi left. Minato looked at the container with Shisui's eyes before sealing them away. Let's get your vision back to 100 shall we, Naruto. Hospital, in a secret underground room, was Kakashi along with two other Anbu guarding one person. That person was Naruto. Kakashi, Tenzo and Yuga were ordered personally by the fourth Hokage to guard Naruto, and only Hokage assigned nurses or doctors were allowed to see him. Kakashi remembered that moment. His sensei hadn't unleashed killing intent since he heard Ibido and Rin died. But it wasn't an anger on Naruto or Kakashi, rather anger at himself for something he didn't know but never pushed on. Naruto's head was covered in bandages. He didn't know what it was. His vision was dark and a pain was in his eyes. He tried feeling his limbs and his legs were fine, but his left arm had an IV drip attached. What the sniff sniff am I in the hospital? He got up and groaned. His back felt like it had been carrying a boulder. He tried taking his bandages off, but a hand stopped him. Who who's there? Asked Naruto, afraid it could be Itachi or the red-haired woman. It's okay Naruto. I'm an Anbu assigned to protect you. You're currently in the hospital, okay? How did I get here? You were in a Jinjutsu-induced coma after Itachi killed the clan. So, it's true. It's not a dream. The clan really is dead. A tear rolled down his cheeks as he tried to sleep. I'll avenge you Shisui. A year later later, Naruto was released from the hospital a month ago by the doctors. The fourth Hokage explained to him his new eyes, his eternal Manjikam Sharingan. The leaf was shocked to hear Itachi slaughtered the clan, leaving only himself and Sasuke alive. Many mourned the dead clan, but not because they loved them or anything. Rather, the last resort of controlling Menma and Mido, who were pranking demons to the civilians and in case they lost control of the fox, were gone. He also learned of why he had four abilities excluding Susanoo with his eyes. He was the Achiha Prince. A prophecy told by the clan's founder and first user of the Sharingan, Indra Atsutsuki. 300 years after his death and in the next 300 years and so forth, an Achiha will be born with special eyes that grant them more abilities, as well as the ability to use other Manjikam abilities with greater mastery than the original user. 
Sadly, in all 1,500 years of the Achiha clan's history, it wasn't until about a century ago when Madara awakened the Manjikum, being the first Achiha to do it. Whether you count Indra or not is your opinion, his right eye abilities were Rajan and Fujin. Rajan gave him unrivaled and godly lightning affinity, along with red and purple colored lightning. Fujin also gave him unrivaled and godlike Afinath, but it's wind instead of lightning. His left eye had Sujin and Kagatsuchi. Sujin allowed him to manipulate and control water on a level not seen since Tabarama Senju and Kagatsuchi was the same, except it was fire. But all these paled in comparison to the Manjikam Sharingan's true power, taming and controlling the tailed beasts. A scary thought. Deciding it's best that he doesn't dwell there anymore, he left, but not before orange paint was dropped on top of him. Orange paint. Only two people he knew could do this. The Yuzuka's children. He'll make them pay for this later. Naruto washed up and changed into new clothes. He read somewhere in the library that Jureya once tried a summoning jutsu without having a contract, and this led him to the toads of M.T. Mayaboku. He wondered if he can get a summoning as well. Strapping his mother's katana, he weaved the hand signs and poof. He was gone. Naruto was falling from the sky. Was this normal for summoners? He looked down and saw mountains, valleys and lakes of lava. What? He was in danger. He remembered the skeletal humanoid he used when he awakened the Manjikam and tried again. Susanu. Nothing. Shit. 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 He was getting scared and desperate. Susanu. Susanu. Oh come on. He then remembered awakening the Susanu when Itachi taunted him. He remembered his words. I can't die like this. Not until I avenged Shisui and the clan. Not until I kill Itachi and in anger shouted Susanu. The ribsage formed and he crashed on the mountainside. Thud, 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 thud. Ow was the only thing he could say as he dispelled his Susanu's rib and took out his mother's blade. Channeling fire chakra to light it, he started walking. Naruto walked for what he could say as only hours. The landscape was mountainous with volcanoes everywhere. Ash was in the air as rivers and lakes of lava were the only things he saw. Suddenly, he saw a small dragon being harassed by big hyenas. Jumping into action, Naruto using his flaming katana fought against the hyenas. It became apparent that the hyenas weren't leaving, so he weaved through hand signs and said, fire style. Great fireball jutsu. The fireball drove the hyenas away, and Naruto turned to the dragon, which was about the size of his palm. Hey little guy. Don't worry I won't hurt you. The dragon didn't look convinced so Naruto pulled out some bread and handed it to the dragon. The dragon sniffed and it licked. It liked it and ate it all. Well that goes my last supply. So, I must have an affinity for dragons seeing as you are one right little guy. To which the dragon simply nodded its head. So, care to tell me where the rest of your family is? The dragon barked and led Naruto to the tallest mountains in the land. Naruto panted and panted. He never felt so tired before. They eventually came to the base of the tallest mountains. Azerbeek. Where were you? Naruto turned around to see a big silver dragon, nearly a hundred feet tall standing at the gate. From the voice, he can tell it was female, although it was very beastly obviously. Naruto saw many smaller wingless dragons, smallest were at least five average humans tall wearing armor and surrounding him. Oh a human who are you, human? This is the first time a human came to the Shadowlands. Shadowlands. Must be the name for this place. He thought. Compassing himself, he answered, my name is Naruto Izuna Che. I have come here after I performed the summoning jutsu without first having a contract. It appears I have an affinity for dragons. Really now? Well my name is Ekaterine, and I will take you to meet my father, Bahamut. Bahamut, yes. My father and boss of the dragon clan. They walked into the castle which was made of black stone. It was a structure larger than anything Naruto had ever seen before. Tall statues of dragon knights decorated the pillars along with gold, jewels and diamonds that could make the daimyos look like peasants in comparison. Hey sis, who this you brought with you? Came the voice of a black dragon with blue markings. Midnight, I told you not to be so loud in the castle came another bigger but wingless dragon with red scales and two massive horns. A bowl with spikes seemed to be his tail as he was covered with numerous scars. Sorry big bro. Jeez chill out. But really though sis, who's this with you? What did they call these again? Ah humans. Humans, humans. Came the reply of the two dragons as well as Naruto. Anyways, where is father? This is important, in the throne room. Replied the red dragon. Thanks Ancelon. She thanked her older brother and walked to the throne room. Should we follow? Asked Midnight. Ancelon didn't say anything but followed. Jerk. Naruto walked into the throne room and was amazed and afraid of the dragon boss, Bahamut. He was nearly 500 meters or half a mile in length. The dragon saw Naruto and narrowed his eyes. Father, I have something that you would like to see. Um, is it about the human? Yes, father. His name is Naruto Izuna Chiha at the clan name, Bahamut's eyes widen in surprise. He has come here via the summoning jutsu without a contract. He may very well be the first human here. Interesting thought Bahamut. 
And why have you come here, Nehru? Azuna will do very well. Tell me, Azuna, why did you come here for power? He stated bluntly. I read somewhere that Uraya of the Sanin was able to get the Toad contract by using the summoning jutsu without a contract. I tried and here I am. And exactly why would someone so young as you would want power for revenge? And exactly revenge on whom? Itachi Ichiha. Naruto had to suppress his hate and anger so as to speak properly, though it was difficult. He killed my older brother, my godmother and my clan. Azuna, I have a question I want to ask you. Sure. What is it? Would you like to become the first summoner of the dragons of the Shadowlands, seeing as you have an affinity towards dragons? Of course I would. But I have to ask, why me? Because we dragons are the strongest summons to ever exist. There are many, many summoning clans, but none are stronger than the Great Four, the Wolves of Fangtooth Valley, the Tigers of the Great Grass Sea, the Phoenixes of the Golden Desert and us, the Dragons of the Northern Shadowlands. Lower and less powerful clans have summoners but not us. You are the first and only human in thousands of years to come here, and many of my kin want to see the world in a good battle. I accept, good. Bahamut then pulled out a scroll from the tip of his tail and gave it to Naruto. Bite your thumb and write your name on the scroll. Then, the contract between you and the dragons is done. Naruto bit his thumb and wrote his name, and done. With this, I am one step closer to killing you, Itachi. Congratulations on being our first summoner, Izuna Che. Hearing this, many dragons roared and jumped in joy at having an summoner and finally getting to go into the world. Excellent. I hope we can work together. Graduation. Seven years later. It's been seven years since Naruto awakened his eternal Manjikam Sharingan and became the first dragon summoner. For Naruto now age 14 the last seven years was boring. The civilian council in Kashina passed a new Acetomy curriculum that stated the academy will only learn books, no chakra control, and for Genin graduation, only the basic clone, substitution and transformation was needed. The academy upped its propaganda, especially on the Uzumaki clan, as it was a subject the Acetomy taught for the next seven years. Naruto hated it. He would simply send a shadow clone to the academy while he stayed in home, practicing tojutsu, ninjutsu, jinjutsu, kinjutsu and sometimes, fuinjutsu. Naruto found a note written by his great-grandfather, Madara, to his grandfather, Tajima. The note contained jutsus created by Madara like the Majestic Destroyer Flame, Majestic Flame Demolisher, Dragon Flame Caterwell and many more. He also found a well-known and believed to be dead tojutsu master named Chen. Master Chen was older than the third Hokage, but his knowledge was still intact. Naruto found him and made a deal, for every tojutsu style he taught, Naruto would give him dumplings and a nigri. He also learned that Chen was the master of Might Dai, father of Might Guy. Chen would eventually die at age 96 and the same time Naruto was 12, but not before having a worthy successor in the form of Naruto. While training in the Forest of Death, Naruto age 12 encountered one Anko Midarashi while he was practicing his majestic flame destroyer and annoyed Naruto to no end with her nickname Chibi-kun. Naruto, in anger accidentally used Kodamatsukami on her. Naruto thought he Jinjutsu killed her but didn't. She swore her loyalty to him as his slave, willing to do anything to please her new master, and Naruto took full advantage of it. From her, he learned of the previous academy's curriculum that the academy taught chakra control and used it to effect by having students, ages 10 or if you already unlocked it, to practice tree walking, water walking, etc. He also learned that they used to have students underwent tests to see their affinity and would teach D-ranked elemental jutsus and D-ranked jinjutsu. The graduation exams at the time required the current basic three, but also breaking out of a high D, low C rank jinjutsu and performing at least one elemental jutsu perfectly. Naruto hated it. The academy changed its curriculum so that civilian kids could pass, and he was certain only kids whose parents were former shinobi or if they were from a clan could be a successful ninja in the future. But he was furious as it was obvious that Kishina didn't want him getting stronger. So, he used Anko to get stronger and used her to get new techniques on ninjutsu or new types of jinjutsu and new seals to learn, some even from the restricted area of the library. And also learned basic medical jutsu like Mystic Palm. On an interesting side note, he learned that with his EMS, he could use Kodamatsukami, and it needed only a 10-day recharge, compared to Shisui's 10 years. Naruto woke up from his bed. Today was the day of the graduation exam and next week, assuming he passed and Kashina didn't sabotage his results, would be in a genin team and later participate in the Chunin exams. He got up his bed and headed downstairs. The house was clean. Due to his training, he didn't have time to clean, but had his slave Anko do it for him. Um, must reward her with a few dango and a little something, he. He prepared some toasts and tea. After eating, he brushed his teeth and looked in the mirror. Most of my baby fat is gone. Must be the constant training. He dressed up, taking the Achiha clan's traditional outfit worn during the Warring States era, and put on his black boots. He walked out his home and went to the academy. 
He just hoped the SFC Sasuke fan club and MMFC Menma and Mita fan club didn't blow out his ear drums again. Academy, Naruto put his head down as he tried to sleep. Last night's training with the dragons left him exhausted and he got little sleep. Why would he get little sleep if he was exhausted, you ask? He slept at 1 a.m. and got up at 7.30 a.m. His sleep and dreams of fucking Anko Silly were interrupted when he heard sounds of a crash and the stampeding noises of angry oxen or buffaloes or some great beast. But it wasn't. It was the president of the SFC and vice president following behind. Sakura Hirono and Ino Yamanaka. Oh no. Thought Naruto in dread as placed himself in a Jinjutsu hoping to drown out the banshee screeches. Ha. Take that Ino pig. I'm sitting next to Sasuke, please forehead. I arrived first, the two were still fighting. Naruto thought, no, he knows that these two would most likely die in a real mission, as their obsession with Sasuke would be their greatest weakness. Naruto saw Menma and Mido Yuzukas as coming in. Mido, followed by a horde of fanboys and Hinata Hayuga clinging on Menma's right arm. Both Yuzukas saw Naruto and scowled. Menma was jealous of Naruto because of his power, and Mido hated him because Naruto put her in a jinjutsu that embarrassed her. He forced her to wear clown makeup and prance around the streets until she nearly drowned herself in the Naka River. Naruto was awoken from his sleep by many gasps. He looked and saw Sasuke and Kiba kissing. Link, Link. He activated his Sharingan to see if it was a Jinjutsu, but it wasn't and only served to photograph it. Where's the bleach? I need it. Where's the grass? I need to touch the grass. The fangirls then beaded the crap out of Kiba for stealing their kiss with Sasuke. Alright class, settle down. We will begin the exams now. Came the Chunin instructor, Iruka Yamino, and the class responded with yes sensei. Before sitting down and readying their pencils. The written exams were finished with Naruto getting 120 100 say and extra 20 for good handwriting, with Shikamaru Nara and Shino Aburam in second place with 98 100s both. Third was Sasuke and a new kid named Sai who got 95 both. Last place was Kiba and Yuzuka who got 12 100s with Menma Yuzuka's not being far behind with 22 100s. For the girls, first place was Sakura with 100 100s and second was Hinata who got 97 100s. Third was Ino with 92, and fourth was Mito with 88 points. Next was Shuriken Jutsu and Kunai throwing. Sasuke and Menma got 18 20ths with Kiba and most civilians getting 6 20ths. Izuna, you're up. Naruto took two Kunai and two Shuriken. Sensei, I would like to do something new. The teacher didn't say anything and allowed it. Naruto jumped high and his head face downwards, and he channeled fire chakra through the shuriken and lightning chakra through the kunai. Phantom shuriken kunai jutsu. The two shuriken and kunai became 12 each, and they hit dead center, along with four additional secret targets that were hidden. The teacher was shocked. Only the fourth and Itachi saw the four hidden targets. Oh congratulations Azuna. You got 24 twentieths, a high score not seen since Lord Fourth or Itachi. What? Iruka sensei Izubaka must have cheated. Only my Sasuke can do that. Said a certain pink-haired banshee we all know. Iruka got tick marks and used his big head jutsu and shouted, shut up Sakura. Izuna performed jonin level chakra control and hit targets that were hidden by Jinjutsu. For your outburst alone, I'm deducing you and Sasuke scores by two points. Hearing this, Sasuke got mad and glared at Sakura, who gulped in fear. How? How did that second rate Ichiha got better scores than me? Menma too was glaring at Naruto with jealousy. I must have his power. The next test was a Tejutsu spar. Naruto went first and knocked out the Chunin assistant Mizuki in 30 seconds. Due to Mizuki being unconscious, the students were paired against each other. Sasuke won against Sai, Shino won against Shikamaru who forfeited, Kiba won against Choji, civilian versus civilian, etc. Hinata defeated Sakura, Mido won against Ino, etc. etc. The next portion of the exams was the ninjutsu portion or as Naruto called it, the basic three. Okay everyone, the next and final part of the exams is the ninjutsu portion. When your name is called, you will go to the examination room and perform the academic three jutsus. You will first do a transformation and turn into a person of your choosing, next you will swap places with a chair and perform the clone jutsu in front of the third and fourth hokages, along with the first lady and elders, said Aruka Yamino before calling the first name, Sasuke Chiha, you're up first. As Sasuke walked away to the room, Naruto covered his ears as the fangirl screeched. Oh Sasuke, Sasuke is number one, my Sasuke will win, your Sasuke. He's mine. He's nothing compared to Menma. By the gods, someone kill them all. Thought Naruto in annoyance. After the clan heirs and a few civilians went here and there, it was finally Naruto's turn. Izuna Chiha, you're up. Naruto said nothing and went straight to the room and stood in front of the two Hokages, the three elders and her. Naruto walked in and broke. Good evening, Nerd. Izuna will do, Lord Hokage. Okay, then Izuna. 
first to a transformation. Naruto nodded his head, and without a single hand seal, poofed and in his place, was Madara Chiha with his left hand grabbing his gun by and his Sharingan glowing menacingly. He looks just like Madara from the history books. Thought Minato with a bit of sweat down his forehead. Okay then, perform the substitution. Naruto transformed back and swapped places with a chair. Now, perform the clone jutsu. Then Naruto's poofed into existence, but unknown to them however, they were shadow clones and not the basic clone jutsu. Alright. I've reviewed your score and I can safely say, you passed with flying colors. However, for additional scores, you can perform a jutsu of your choice. I would like that, Lord Hokage. Let's see what jutsu you know, my secret son. Higher style. Majestic demolisher flame. Naruto shouted the name and hit the wall. Seals were kept on the wall so as to not break, but Naruto's jutsu broke the wall, much to Minotaya Mazumamton's surprise. How? The seals were supposed to not let this happen. He compassed himself and asked, Neru I mean Izuna, where did you learn that jutsu? Ichiha clan's library, I see. Well anyways, here is your headband and congratulations on being a genin. Thank you Lord Fourth. He grabbed his headband and left. Ishina put an expressionless face, but inside, she was seething, how could that bitch's son be more powerful than my own? The class was back in the classroom. Many talking about who's the rookie of the year or how they were going to either in Sasuke Menma's team. Quiet class. Haruka came in, along with Mizuki, and the class became quiet. I will announce the dead last and rookie of the year and Kinoichi of the year. Dead last is Kiba in Yuzuka, just as he said that, Kiba groaned and some laughed at him. Kinoichi of the year is Sakura Haruno, but before Iruka could continue, Sakura jumped and declared supremacy over Ino, and rookie of the year is Izuna Cha. What? Came from Sasuke, Menma and all their fangirls. But Iruka sensei Sasuke deserves that title far more than Izuna does. Said Sakura with many fangirls agreeing. Now now, Sakura, Izuna answered every question correctly, knocked out a Chunin, did Jonin level chakra control, and performed a high level fire jutsu. Now everyone, come back tomorrow for the team selection at 9 o'clock. Dismissed. Sasuke seethed his teeth. I should be the stronger Ichiha. I'm the next heir. I deserve that title. Menma became angry. One day, your power will be mine. Hokage's office. In front of the Hokage stood nine jonin of the leaf. Among them were Kashina Yuzumaki who decided to come out of retirement, Kakashi Haddock, Kurana Yuhi and Asuma Siratobi. Team 6 will consist of Menma and Mito Yuzukas and Sai. Jonin Sensei, Kashina Yuzumaki. Kashina grinned, now that Ichiha will know his place. And Kakashi had a disappointed eye. Theme 7 will be Sasuke Ichiha, Sakura Haruno and Izuna Ichiha. Jonin Sensei, Kakashi Haddock. Team 8, Kiba Inuzuka, Hinata Hayuga and Shino Aburam. Jonin will be Kurana Yuhi. Since Team 9 is still in active duty, Team 10 will be the new Inoshikacho under Asuma Siratobi. Everyone dismissed. Everyone left except Kakashi. Sensei, I requested to be Mema and Mito's sensei. I know Kakashi, but Kashina insisted she be their sensei. If you could give me some seals I could handle the nine tails. I'm sorry Kakashi, but the council wanted you to train Sasuke and Izuna in their Sharingan. Kakashi was disappointed but nevertheless accepted. Besides, you're teaching Abito's younger cousin. Because they're Achiha. No. Shisui was Abito's younger brother and in turn makes Izuna his younger cousin. Seriously? Asked a surprised Kakashi. Yes. And you're also teaching one of my children. What? Asked Kakashi as if he had been hit with the 1000 years of death. How? I thought Memna and Mito were your only children. Yes. You know him as Izuna Chiha, but his real name is Naruto Izuna Chihanamakas. How did it happen? It all began when. Hugh long explanation that the author doesn't want to write. Wow sensei. Yes. Wow indeed. Will you tell him? That you are his father? One day perhaps. But I don't think he'll care. Why? Because I failed as a father. Kakashi was saddened to hear this. His sensei was an opera and he always wanted a family. To hear him say that he failed as a father was a sad statement. Don't worry sensei. I'll get Izuna to brighten up and once he finds out, he'll welcome you with open arms. Thank you Kakashi. Naruto walked home to see Anko in a maid outfit cleaning his house. Welcome home master. I hope your day was good. I guess it was. Did you prepare some food for me, my slave? Yes master. It's in the dining room. He walked into the dining room and ate the food that his slave prepared for him. He thought hard on his progress and he enjoyed it. He was strong, that much he knew. In three years, he would be strong enough to kill Itachi. But there was also the matter of the clan's restoration. Even how Sasuke doesn't pay attention to his fangirls, he wondered if Sasuke was interested in the male gender. Shaking those thoughts out, Naruto looked at Anko and decided she would be the lab rat to lose his virginity. Anko, yes master, tonight, you're sleeping with me, naked. Of course master. Next morning, Naruto woke up and stretched his arms. He remembered last night's makeout session. He was a bit too young to have children, so he put a birth control seal on Anko and did the deed. 
he looked at the sleeping form of Anko and played with her sea cup breeds before kneeling down and sucking them and licking Anko's cheeks. He looked at the clock and saw it was 7.45. Still early. He cleaned his cock on Anko's purple hair before he commanded her again. Anko, go downstairs, clean up and prepare breakfast. Anko's eyes opened as her brain took in her master's new orders. She quickly got up and went downstairs. Academy, alright everyone. I know you're all excited to know your teammates and new sensei, but settle down, I'll announce the teams now. Every fangirl wanted to be with either Menmar Sasukueras, every fanboy wanted Mido. Team 1 is Naruto tuned off until he got to the important part, he his team. Team 7 will consist of Sasuke Chiha, Sakura Haruno he was interrupted by a loud banshee voice. Yes. In your face Eno pig. True love conquers all. Shut up forehead. Quiet you too. As I was saying, Team 7 will consist of Sasuke Chiha, Sakura Haruno. Yes. True love. Quiet. Sorry Ruka sensei. And Azuna Chiha under Kakashi Haddock. Kakashi Haddock. Where have I heard that name before? Naruto. Yes. I have Sasuke. He will definitely fall for me and we'll have kids and I'll be MS. Chiha, but why do we need to have Izuna? He's just trying to steal Sasuke's spotlight. Sakura, great. I have the useless fangirl, but at least I have the second rate Chiha, and I can steal his secrets. Team 8, Kiba Inuzuka, Hinata Hayuga and Shino Aburam under Kurana Yuhi. Team 9 is still in circulation so Team 10, Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara and Choji Akimichi under Asuma Siratobi. I wanted to be with Menma though. It doesn't matter. I'll just have to work with these two. Hinata. Why do I get the lazy ass and fatso? You know. Haha. <laughs> Sasuke saw Menma and Mita laughing at them. Hey. What's so funny? It's because we know Kakashi and he'll be three hours late. What? Asked a surprised Sakura. Are Jonins this late? But then, the Jonins for team 6, 8 and 10 came. Team 8, meet me on training ground 8. Team 10 on training ground 14. Team 6, training ground 22 said Kashina and left. But not before giving Naruto a dark glare. Um, teammates Jonin was pretty. Perhaps I could use a new slave. Thought Naruto. Three hours later, three hours passed by. Naruto was enjoying his new book, titled Loveless. Sakura was trying to start a conversation with Sasuke but failed each time. Naruto had enough and walked to the door. Sakura saw this and asked, hey. Where are you going? Naruto paid her no mind and simply walked out the door. Rude. Finally, Kakashi came. Team 7. He asked and got angry nods from Sasuke and Sakura. But he noticed something odd. Where is the third member? He went outside just a few minutes ago. Okay. Might as well search for his speech was broken when he saw Naruto leaning on the door with a can of soda in his left hand and a book in his right. Took you long enough. Was all he said. Okay then. My first impression of you three is you're boring. Meet me on the roof in five minutes. And with that he flickered away. Rooftop. Bakashi sat on the railings and thought he had time to catch up on some reading. But Naruto appeared in a body flicker and did nothing except drink and read. So he knows the body flicker. Five minutes later, Sasuke and Sakura, panting heavily from running up the stairs finally arrived. Okay. Why don't you introduce yourselves? Akashi sensei like how? Asked Sakura. This is supposed to be the Kinoichi of the year. Kakashi thought disappointed. Well, likes, dislikes and dreams for the future and hobbies. Why don't you go first and tell us how it's done, sensei? Okay, my name is Kakashi Haddock, my likes are none of your concern. I have a few dislikes, as for dreams I have some hobbies. All we learned was his name thought the three. How about you go first, Pinky? Scowling at the name, she compassed herself and began, my name is Sakura Haruno. My likes are glances at Sasuke, my dreams are Sasuke again, and dreams are Sasuke again. And dislikes, Ino Pig and Izubaka. She looked at Naruto and nothing. What a total fangirl. Were the thoughts of the other three. What about you, Mr. Brooding Duck Butt? Kakashi said pointing at Sasuke. Sasuke scowled. My name is Sasuke Chia. I don't have a lot of likes, I hate a lot of things. I don't have any hobbies in my dream, no it's an ambition cause I'm making it a reality. I'm going restore my clan and kill a certain someone. Sasuke so cool. Sakura. As I thought. Kakashi. Not with your pathetic strength and your first kiss being Kiba you're not. Naruto. How about you go next, Mini Madara? Said Kakashi. Naruto gave neither a scowl nor an angry reply. My name is Izuna Chia. Telling you my likes is pointless as you don't care about it, just as I don't care about yours. Dislikes are the same. I have no intention of telling you either my hobbies or dreams, he's just trying to act cooler than my Sasuke. Sakura. And I thought Sasuke was cold Kakashi. Anyways you three aren't genin yet, what? But Kakashi sensei, we passed the graduation exam, oh that? It was to see if you can handle being genin. The real exam's tomorrow. Meet me at training ground 7, tomorrow at 7 a.m. And a bit of advice, don't eat. Kakashi left and Naruto stood up. He body flickered to his home and wondered if Kakashi could dance well against him. 
please go support Sith Trooper 09 for writing that awesome fanfic. Deem 7, Naruto woke up and saw it was 6.40. It was too damn early. It should have pride or not, it was still too early for a 14-year-old. If his sensei was going to be another three hours late again, he hoped to whatever god was listening that he could dance with Kakashi to teach him a lesson. Groaning in tiredness, he got up and washed his face. After that he walked down and prepared a meal. Screw what his sensei said. Eating breakfast was necessary and he already woke up earlier than usual. After he finished, he brushed his teeth and got dressed. He put on his fingerless arm warmers which had special seals that contained his shuriken and kunai. He put on his Ichiha war cloak and strapped his mother's okatana to his belt. He walked to another room where portraits of his big brother, mother and grandparents as well as great-grandparents were. He lit the candles and placed a bowl of soup on the table. He looked at the war fan that his great-grandfather used to carry to battle against the Senju during the Warring States period. He wondered if he should take it today in case Kakashi was really as strong as the bingo book claimed. Over the years since he got his EMS, Danzo had been sending his Foundation Anbu to talk him into joining their group, but Shisui warned him of the Foundation and the evils they did and said no. Despite his EMS, he wasn't strong enough at the time to take on Anbu Shisui always held back on their spars to Chunin level and escaped only due to Jinjutsu. Ishina too bribed and seduced several drunk civilians and Chunins to try to kill Naruto. But over the years, as he trained with Master Chen, the Dragons and Anko, he was able to beat and kill some Foundation Nin without much difficulty. If Tai, Nin or Ken didn't work, death by Jinjutsu was always an option. Deciding on his choice, he grabbed the gun by and attached a chain to the keyhole on the bottom and placed the end of the chain on a specialized seal on his wrist and attached the gun by on his back. Wish me luck. He said to the portraits and hoped he succeeded. With that he flickered away. Three hours later, it was 10 a.m. and Kakashi still haven't arrived. Sasuke and Sakura were sitting near the wadden posts while Naruto was hiding in the tree. Sakura kept asking for a date and it was annoying Sasuke greatly. Someone, Kakashi, Dobe, anybody. Please help. He screamed in his brooding head. If he heard Sakura ask for a date one more time, he'll burn her to ashes. Luckily, Kakashi came just in time. Yo, Kakashi sensei. You're three hours late again. What happened? Screamed Sakura in all her banshee glory, and Naruto nearly fell down. Kakashi pulled out his earplugs and ignored Sakura's pathetic kai. You see, as I was making my way here, a black cat crossed my path, and I had to take the long way around. Replied Kakashi which caused Sakura and Sasuke to facip him. Really? The excuses of Abido Nai. Thought Naruto as he was very familiar with Abido's infamous excuses. Given that Kakashi was his teammate, it wasn't surprising. Don't you dare give us that lame excuse. Screamed Sakura in anger. Kakashi paid her no mind and instead looked around and saw something strange. Naruto wasn't here. Where's Naruto? Didn't he arrive? Well, he hastened but before Sakura could say another word, Naruto jumped in front of her and the scared Sakura jumped away in shock. Aizubaka. Don't scare me like that again, DCH was all Naruto said to her. I was always here. I hid behind the tree and suppressed my chakra. And for the last time, Sensei, it's Izuna. Okay said Kakashi, but inside his mind he was different. How could I not have detected him? He must have a good teacher since only Guy could ever sneak up on me like that, and I know Naruto never trained under Guy. How could I not have sensed him? What is his secret? I need it way more than this Ichiha fraud. Thought Sasuke in a fury. Now then, let's begin the exam shall we? He pulled out a clock and two lunchboxes. He put the lunchboxes on the ground and the clock on the middle post. Your objective is to get one of these bells from me. If you Kakashi was interrupted by Sakura, but Kakashi sensei, there's only two bells. Wow Haruno, I must say I'm rather impressed. I didn't know you could actually think of something other than your precious Asuke said Naruto in a mocking tone. Shut it Izubaka or else. Screeched Sakura in anger. Or else what? Your threats don't scare me. Trying to defuse the situation, Kakashi coughed and got their attention. As I was saying, the objective of the exam is to take these bells from me. There's two because the one who doesn't get a bell will go back to the academy. Hearing this, Sasuke's eyes widened in shock and Sakura gasped, but Naruto's face remained neutral. No. I must get those bells. I must become stronger to kill him. No. I must win so that Sasuke can see I'm strong. Then, he'll love me and marry me. If one of you fails, you'll get tied up and not eat for the day. Hearing this, Sasuke and Sakura's stomachs growled, but Naruto's didn't. You ate didn't you? Naruto nodded his head. May I ask why you defiled my orders? It wasn't an order. It was an advice and I don't take bad advices. Besides, if I advised you to hug the green, bushy brows man, would you? Shivering at that thought, Kakashi simply shrugged. Okay. Your time starts now. And the genin disappeared. Okay, Sasuke's hiding in the tree branches and Sakura's pink hair sticks out in the bushes, but where's Naruto? 
he is able to hide in plain sight without me detecting which is impressive for a genin to do clearing his thoughts and focusing on a clear target, he disappeared with leaves falling down his position. Sakura was hiding in the bushes trying to formulate a plan. If I can find Sasuke then we can work together and get the bells. And as we're the only ones to pass, we'll be the only ones on the team, and he'll see how well we work together, and then he'll love me, then propose to me and we'll get married. Were the thoughts of one Sakura Hirono as she was crawling to find Sasuke. Suddenly, Sakura felt a bit dizzy and looked around but saw nothing. Then she heard something. Saw saw Sakura please help me. She turned around and saw Sasuke who had various kunai and shuriken on his back, blood all over his body, as his legs were twisted 90 degrees and missing his left arm. Saw Sasuke. She gasped out. Then Sasuke dropped dead and she screamed and passed out. Bakashi stood on a nearby tree branch and sighed. Perhaps I overdid it, but she should have seen through a simple d rank Jinjutsu. Thought Kakashi before he jumped away to block three kunais thrown at him. Bakashi looked back and saw Sasuke come at him. Hmm, pretty good aim he has he thought. So you want to be the first one to try to get the bells, don't underestimate me. I'm better than them and I'll get the bells and pass. He declared loudly. That has yet to been seen. Sasuke got into his clan's Tajutsu style, the interceptor fist, and jumped to Chunin level speeds which surprised Kakashi. Kakashi blocked a few punches and kicks and got behind Sasuke and put his fingers in the tiger sign. Hidden leaf secret to Jutsu. 1000 years of death. He declared as he struck Sasuke in the butt. Sasuke suddenly jumped up and screamed in pain and landed on the open field. Far away, Naruto recorded the event with his Sharingan. Comedy gold was his thought as he wiped a tear of laughter. Sasuke got up and absolutely livid. How dare he embrace me like that. I'm in a chair. He got up with new determination and weaved through Hansons and shouted, fire style great fireball jutsu. And launched a fireball at Kakashi. Kakashi's eye widened in shock at seeing the fireball. What? A genin shouldn't have enough chakra for a C-rank jutsu. He thought and got away. Where is he? Behind. Above. Left. Right. Sasuke looked around for Kakashi until he felt two hands touch his legs and pulled him underground as Kakashi looked down on him. Impressive Sasuke. Not many genin can do a C-rank jutsu, but you still can't catch me. I'm the next head of the mighty Achiha clan. I demand that you release me right now. Well, he's certainly loud as a beetle. Sakura woke up and saw Sasuke's head sticking out the ground. She screamed in panic. Sakura. I'm not dead. My body is buried underground. Don't worry, Sasuke, I'll get you out. Naruto decided enough was enough and landed in front of Kakashi. Kakashi was surprised as this was the fourth time he could not sense Naruto. Aizubaka. Help me dig out Sasuke so then we can pass this test. Screeched Sakura. Naruto paid her no mind and simply stared at Kakashi. So, decided to try getting the bells, Izuna. Let's see if you have better luck than Sasuke or Sakura. Naruto didn't respond. If his profile on the bingo book is true, I can't underestimate him and put up a tiger seal and shouted, let's dance shall we, Kakashi sensei. Fire style. Great fireball jutsu. And a fireball nearly the height of a two-story building or six times bigger than Sasuke's came charging at Kakashi. Kakashi was too shocked at the fireball size to get away. When he got out of his shock, he quickly performed a substitution. That was close. I could have been ashes from that fireball. Naruto in a burst of speed appeared in front of Kakashi, which shocked the Jonin greatly. Naruto intended to punch Kakashi on his left side, but in pure instinct, Kakashi blocked it. Then, Naruto kicked Kakashi away as he got into his personalized Tajutsu style, the dance of the Dragon Interceptor, which combined the dragons and Ichiha's two styles together. He quickly jumped up, and Kakashi just managed to avoid an axe kick. The Sasuke and Sakura, it looked like Naruto vanished and appeared again like a flash. Wow Sakura, how is this dope so strong? What's his secret? Sasuke. Bakashi blocked the first few punches and kicks, but he didn't sense the hits from Naruto hurt like guys though to a lesser extent. Kakashi could only think of one word for Naruto's style. Unorthodox. The style was very unusual, relying on the arms and legs for defense and fists, palms and feet for attack. It almost looked like Naruto was using a few already existing tojutsu techniques, mixed them with the interceptor and a few dances. Most unusual indeed. Naruto backed away and channeled chakra through his seals on the arm warmers, and six shuriken three on each hand, appeared, and he threw them and mudded phantom shuriken jutsu. The six shuriken turned into thirty, and Naruto did hand signs and said, fire style. Phoenix age flower nail crimson jutsu. And the shurikens had fire on them. Bam. A perfect combo of two jutsus. Thought Kakashi before he too did hand signs and said, earth style. Mudwall. And a stone wall with dog faces, managed to shield Kakashi from the blazing shurikens. Kakashi appers before the lake, and Naruto drew his okatana which Kakashi blocked with a kunai. 
although he wasn't a swords person, he had to admit, the sword in Naruto's hands was nothing short of beautiful. So, you finally decided to get serious huh, this is a battle, so why shouldn't I? I waited for the perfect opportunity to strike, but you've managed to block my every attack. Though I shouldn't be too surprised seeing as how you're one of the most feared, respected and experienced in the village, despite your tardiness, so you could have helped Sasuke or Sakura, but you didn't. Why if you don't me asking? Said Kakashi in a disappointed voice. Did the massacre made them this cold? Naruto pulled back his sword and started attacking a few times. While striking, he gave his answer, indeed I could have but I didn't. The answer is simple. Sasuke's pride would have never allowed himself to work together with me as he sees me as lower, and Sakura would have think I was trying to be cooler than her Sasuke, he actually thought all that. Well I can't blame him for that, still, he should have at least tried. Which is annoying because the meaning of this test is teamwork, you figured it out. But inside his mind, he was like but how? There is no gen in team with two-man teams, unless a member is dead or is in a special position. And the leaf prides itself on its teamwork so it was pretty easy. And the two bells and two lunchboxes with a no-eating advice was to test our teamwork, he definitely is your son in the intelligence and skill department, Minato-sensei. Handling fire chakra through his blade, Naruto's blazing sword sliced through Kakashi's kunai, before slicing Kakashi in half, only to reveal he substituted in the last second. That was Jonin level chakra control. Did Shisui taught him? Thought Kakashi as he stood on the lake. He was confident Naruto didn't know water walking and knew he could defend with a water jutsu Incas Naruto tried another fire jutsu. Does he really think I don't know what he's planning? How foolish. Naruto performed one of his favorite jutsu, the body flicker technique used by Shisui, which earned him the nickname of Shisui the teleporter or Shisui of the body flicker. Kakashi saw Naruto just vanish from sight and faded into nothingness with blue smoke in his position. No doubt about it. It's the same type of body flicker technique that Shisui used. He taught it to Naruto too, well, just my luck. Bakashi avoided the Okatana being thrown at him by Naruto, and Naruto grabbed his sword back with a chain attached to the handle. Kakashi spat out a fireball jutsu, and Naruto reflected the fireball with his gun by. Fire style. Fire dragon flame bullet. Shouted Naruto as five dragons attacked Kakashi, but Kakashi used a few water jutsu to turn them into steam, and he jumped back to land as he avoided the last dragon. Oh screw it. Cursed Kakashi mentally and unveiled his Sharingan. So it's true then. Said Naruto unsurprised by Kakashi Sharingan. What I heard about wasn't rumors after all, what have you heard about me? Asked Kakashi. You are known as the copy ninja Kakashi, because you've copied over a thousand jutsu with your Sharingan, a last memento of my older cousin, Abito Che. I'm curious, where did you get your information? In the bingo book, of course. Naruto attacked Kakashi with his fully matured Sharingan, much to Kakashi's shock. You already have a fully matured Sharingan? Asked a bewildered Kakashi to which Naruto nodded. When did you unlock it? When I was seven. You unlocked your Sharingan at age seven. At Shisui's funeral. Makes sense. Report said they were very close. I'm ending this. Wine style. Great breakthrough. Said Naruto as he let out a large burst of wind to Kakashi. The wind affinity as well. Fire is obvious as he's in Achiha, but where did he get wind? Coercion Sharingan. Kakashi's world turned into a nightmarish hellscape as the Jinjutsu took effect and Kakashi tried breaking out, but it proved to be difficult. Laserbeak, go grab a bell. Commanded Naruto to the small dragon which hung on his chest and grabbed a bell just as Kakashi broke free of the Jinjutsu. What a horrible Jinjutsu. Where on earth could he have learnt it from? Then Kakashi saw Naruto with a bell in his hand. I take it I pass the test, I guess you do. Let's go check on Sasuke and Sakura. Sakura panted heavily as she finally managed to dug out Sasuke. Sasuke was getting ready for round two and was willing to use Sakura as a distraction so as to fry both her and Kakashi. But then, Kakashi and Naruto arrived, with the latter having a bell in his hand. How? He must have cheated. Only my Sasu can defeat a Jonin and get a bell by himself, not the second-rate lower Achiha trash. Thought Sakura in her in denial and hate. What? I should be the one to have that bell. I'm the heir and next head of the clan. I should be the stronger Achiha, not him. Thought Sasu in anger and jealousy. After a couple of minutes, the three stood in front of Kakashi. Well, seeing as how Naruto was the only one to get a bell, I might as well say where you went wrong. Sakura, you were too focused on Sasuke that you didn't notice a D-ranked Jinjutsu and nearly fainted at the sight of Sasuke's head on the ground. You Sasuke, you're strong for a genin, but your pride didn't want you to admit fault and brush any thought of attempting to help. You even demanded that I let you go. Ninja from enemy villages will kill you in an instant if you did it in front of them. Sakura's face fell down as Sasuke's face turned into a scowl. Kakashi turned to Naruto. What will you do with your bell now, Izuna? Give it to them. The meaning behind this test is teamwork. 
This is my team and I'll help them to pass and if are to fail, then we'll do it as a team. If that's your last decision then I have no choice but to pass you. He said with a thumbs up. Huh? Was what Sasuke and Sakura could say. Izuna sacrificed his chance on becoming a genin so that you can pass. Congratulations. As of now you are officially Team 7. Sakura cheered while Sasuke smirked. Naruto's face was stoic and expressionless. He could have made Sasuke and Sakura redo it, but he decided not to. Probably out of fear for the civilian council and the elders. Shisui Nai always did say they're like rabid dogs, barking every chance they got. But whatever. It's not my concern. I would probably celebrate my genin promotion in an enjoyable way with Anko. And with that, disappeared in a body flicker. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.